Phase 3 finally comes to a close with Peter Parker's European vacation. Now, join me, universe, as we discuss Spider-Man Far From Home. But don't worry, it's spoiler free. What's up, guys, and welcome to the Web's first must-see comic and nerd culture show. Welcome to the Comic Universe. I'm Dr. J. I've got a PhD in nerd culture, and I should know. I printed it out myself. What's up, guys? It's Dr. J here for the Comic Universe, and as you can see, I'm riding solo here on this video. You see my hat. You see my shirt. I'm sure you know what we're going to be talking about. We're going to be talking about Spider-Man Far From Home. That is right, you guys. I just got back from seeing it, and so I am here to do... A spoiler free review of Spider-Man Far From Home while our boy C-Dubs will be handling the spoiler version so if you want spoilery thoughts be sure to come back here and see what Dubs thought about the movie I will leave that linked in a card and the end card at the end in case you guys want to check that out once it goes up future me please remember to do that <laughs> but anyway Moving on, let's go ahead and talk about this movie. So, without spoiling anything, what was the movie about and what did I think of it? First off, you guys see my background, you see that poster, you see my hat, you see my shirt. I love this character. Spider-Man is my favorite Marvel character of all time. Right up there with probably a close second being his daughter, Mayday Parker from the MC2 universe. I, just, I love Spider-Man so much. He's a character that I grew up with, always related to, and just, you know, never let go. Even though, like, I've fallen out of comics recently, one character that I will always, you know, go to and reread his stories over and over again and just never get tired of is Spider-Man. And, you know, Tom Holland really made a splash in Civil War and especially with Homecoming. So I was really looking forward to seeing what was going to happen now that he's experienced all this with Endgame and Infinity War and all that crazy stuff. And, of course, dealing with the death of his mentor figure. So it's another Uncle Ben-esque situation. And that's... You know, rough for the poor kid. And that's definitely a lot of what this movie is about. A lot of this movie, it's sort of a PTSD kind of thing, right? Because Peter just experienced Endgame. Which was just so mind-blowing and large-scale. I mean... You know how we fans reacted to Endgame. Imagine if you were a 15 year old in the thick of it. Man, that's gotta be crazy. And also, you know, Tony. Tony, the one person who really believed in Peter, who gave Peter that chance, who inspired Peter to become the hero that he is. I mean, you know, that was also Uncle Ben, but you know, the MCU wants to also put an importance on Tony as well because of, you know, the, the pillar of the MCU that Tony is. But, point being, Tony's gone now. Peter doesn't have that mentor figure to talk about superhero stuff with. And so, because of that, he kind of just wants to stay low-key. He wants to just experience life as a teenager. Because, you know, he needs to chill after experience all, experience, experiencing all that. And, like... So he tries to go on his class field trip with his friends in Europe and he wants to tell MJ how he feels about her and it definitely still maintains like that John Hughes-esque like teen movie high school comedy type vibe that I really enjoyed from Homecoming. I kept that going and I love that right like because I've said it before in my review of Homecoming, one of the things that I really did not appreciate in 
either Spider-Man series is the fact that we really didn't get a good look at Spider-Man's high school years. You know, if you read the comics, Spider-Man's high school years were a big part of his journey, especially in the beginning. And I love that they're kind of taking the Harry Potter approach with Tom Holland Spider-Man. We actually get to see him grow and develop as a person with each film. We get to see him get older, make mistakes, learn from those mistakes. And, you know, some people might say that, like, the whole lesson with him taking up Tony's mantle and living up to Tony's legacy and the trust that Tony put in him is kind of repeating the lesson from Endgame. Or, not Endgame, from Homecoming. But it really isn't, though, because this is completely different. With Far From Home, he is now more dealing with being... An Avenger being a hero people saw him save the world he was part of that and he doesn't know if he can handle that and Tony he sees that spark in him See, because there are definitely a lot of similarities between Peter Parker and Tony Stark but Peter has the opportunity as Tony saw to be better than him and in Homecoming that was more about him kind of realizing that he can be a hero without the technology. And in Far From Home, it's more about he can handle the large-scale stuff. He is ready to be on the big stage. He is an Avenger. He can handle this. This is what he was made for. And it's bigger than him, right? It's not just his life. It's the world. Because with great power comes great responsibility and that's really the message that the movie tries to hit home for this time around and it really does work and a lot of the high school teenage romance elements are still in there really enjoyed that i love zendaya in this movie zendaya is not your typical mj depiction in fact she reminds me more of the ultimate version of Gwen Stacy because she's more punkish, she's got a little bit of an emo streak, she's got a really dark, sarcastic sense of humor, which again reminds me more of Ultimate Gwen Stacy, and I love it. Honestly, MJ fits perfectly within like the modern context of like what a teenager is now. Spider Man was made in the 60s, so MJ in the 60s was like this free spirit, like super confident model independent woman you know that's what the 60s portrayed as like the ideal woman um for especially for like a high schooler like or like i guess he was in college when he actually met mj so not high schooler but uh now mj is this very smart very sarcastic very cynical character and you know what i'm gonna be honest if i was pete and I was in class with her, I'd probably get a crush on her too. You know what? She's really cool. She's very down to earth and she gets him. And I think the chemistry is definitely there and they could build a very solid relationship. I really dig it. And my man Ned Leeds. I love Ned. Ned's hilarious. Um, he's where a lot of the comedy comes from. It's pretty funny. I really dig Ned. Sure, some of his plot was uh, a little bit on the annoying side and they kind of overstayed on his jokes, but still like Ned. I really enjoyed the back and forth between the teachers uh, on the field trip. I thought that was pretty hilarious. And I also just really enjoyed the twist on Flash Thompson. He's no longer the jock bully. He's just the rich, douchey vlogger, YouTuber social media influencer. Ugh, I hate that word, despite the fact that I create content on YouTube. Like, comment, and subscribe. But, yeah, you know, I think it's really cool, and, you know, I'm not even gonna... Don't get me started on Aunt Bay, man. Ooh. Whew. Whew. Marissa Tomei. Man, you know, if I, if I, if I say what I want to say about Marissa Tomei, I think the video might get demonetized, so I'm gonna just 
stay silent on that one. But overall, this movie was great. It has a little something for every kind of Spidey fan. Uh, if you just like teen movies, this is a great movie to watch. If you like superhero movies, this is a great movie to watch. If you like Spider-Man, this is a movie you need to watch because this really does capture the essence of Spider-Man. And I know I spent the whole video and didn't talk about Mysterio because I can't really talk too much about Mysterio without going into spoilers. But just know Jake Gyllenhaal did an amazing job as Quentin Beck really sold it. I really liked his performance and I really liked the direction they went in. Even if it was predictable if you knew the character and you had any comic knowledge. But still, really enjoyed it. Overall, definitely go see this movie, especially if you're a Spider-Man fan. I 100% think it's worth it. And those are the Doctor's Orders. Until next time, I'll catch you guys later. Don't forget to Hulk smash that like button and hit that subscribe button and notification bell so you get notified every time I upload a new video. Or C-Dubs or DPZ uploads new videos as well. Don't forget, Dubs will be back here with the spoiler version of the Far From Home review. So if you want to hear some more spoilery details and you're not satisfied with the vague plot that I talked about, definitely come back for his video. But until next time, guys, this is Jay from Mysterious Reviews for the Comic Universe, and hopefully I'll see you guys next time in the universe. Thwip, thwip.